Hello, welcome. It is the Everton Day Live Extra here on Toffee TV. I am joined by Jack, who has been in a secret place this week. Are you allowed to say? You're, you're allowed to say you've been on jury duty, I believe. Well, you're still on jury duty, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, all right, Ned. Experience yeah. In... So uh, Ned, have you done jury duty yeah, before? I, he's never mentioned that, has he? It's ne never come up. I'm the most experienced in this field. But uh, in the world, in the room, is like Christopher Nolan going to make a film about you? <laughs> how do. you conquer Ned and Heimer. <laughs> how you? Ned. How you? How you conquered? Anyway, in Ned's anyway. section. Anyway, Ned section. That's actually that's actually Ned's awesome, section. Isn't that? Yeah, we'll we'll give him it. Me. Killian Murphy won't play you. Be... Killian Murphy isn't ginger. Yeah, you'll be played by little ginger fat kid. Let's get it right. Little ginger fat yeah. kid. Yeah. Um, let's move on. Let's, people don't want to hear about you. Do you want to hear about Jack? Because Jack's special, right? Because he's only here so often. Um, yeah, Ian Acho. So, I mean, let's just give this a little bit of context. Everton are desperate for a centre forward. Um, Bill Altore. Doesn't look like he's signing for Everton. Although he hasn't signed for Atalanta yet. And the talk is it might take another week for him to sign for Atalanta. I don't know why, but apparently... Well, Paul Joyce has said earlier today, I think the the club themselves believe they're neck and, le neck, and neck with okay. Atalanta. Okay. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff the club believe that yeah. isn't always necessarily true. So it's one, it looks like he's going to Italy, doesn't it? It looks like that's the most likely. But, yeah, I mean... I and but also though, if Everton aren't getting like if he's not coming here, if he's not like sitting in like Finch Farm ready to sign or something, Everton need to do something, don't they? They can't be, you know, the season is two weeks away. You know, it's it's coming very, up very quickly. You know, you're looking at other teams and what they're doing and watching them play all their fancy friendlies abroad and all that. They all seem, or it almost feels like, because of the comp the teams they're playing against, like they are miles ahead of us even though some of them are not and even though it's because we have this perception of the teams we're who were watching who are all like you know um who have to almost raise the level because of the teams they're up against i've seen a little bit last night like newcastle and chelsea 60 odd thousand in the ground to watch them they have to be at like a certain level where Everton don't really need to be at that level yet because that's not where we are it's more to do with what's going on off the field but do, do you think that Someone like Ian Acho could be just a, a good one where Everton go, right, we can get him. We know what the price is. He'll come in. He'll do a job. It's great that we're after that lad that we've worked on probably for months. But actually, we do need to have some players in, especially with Dominic Avalon yet to make an appearance in, in uh, any of the preseason games. I don't think, really, ideally, we should be signing Ian Nacho. Yeah. I don't think he's particularly great, and I don't think he massively fits us either. That being said, the alternative is starting the Premier League season with Neil Mopé yeah, that's up top. If Calvert-Lewin's still not fit, mm. Ella Sims has gone, Tom Cannon's going back out on loan Probably, by the look yeah. of it. So, and Neil Mopé would be the best option out of those three anyway. And he's obviously not good enough. So obviously we need to really try and avoid starting the season with him as our mm. number nine. The other side of that is that if you sign a year, Nacho, it is almost like a panic buy just with that first game in mind. If you're looking at all these certain profiles of strikers, your uh, Brian Brobries, your um, El Bill Altores, big physical strikers, taller, good turn of pace. I know Ian Acho's got a good turn of pace, but he's not really a, a physical strong striker. Younger lads as well from Europe. You're coming in, you're looking at their potential as well. And yeah, you're coming in for a bigger fee than what Ian Acho would cost, but your value is going to increase if you play well. If you don't do particularly well, you're still a young lad, so there'll still be yeah. teams who want to take that risk on you. Ian Acho has that same sort of makeup as Neil Malpe. For me, that sort of sign of... Well, he's wasn't the best striker at a Premier League team. He was that went down last year. You know, yeah, I was going to yeah. say um, Brighton not doing too well the season before, but mm. they finished above us when they had Malpe. So at least we were buying a player off a team who <laughs> were better than us then. Yeah. But this is, you know, a, a striker from a team who've just been relegated. He wasn't particularly yeah, yeah. great for them either. If he comes in and he doesn't work. He's another one who's going to be harder to get rid of. Yeah, that's that's the problem, isn't it? I mean, 
Fab Romano has literally just tweeted that El Bill Torre is going to do a medical on Friday. 28 million euros, fixed fee, 3 million euros in add ons, 15% sell on. Um, so that's that, for Atalanta, yeah. That's done. So that, that that's done, that's isn't it? That's done. I think we all knew that anyway. It, it was just that there was a little bit, little bit of chatter that it wasn't going to happen until next week. But that's, listen, it's probably better that it's done. And it, we're not sitting here being dragged along again and Everton going, oh, we might have a chance. Then at least if it's done, it's done and Everton have to move on to the next target. Like you say, someone like him, you know, whether I've heard people say, I'll get someone who's Premier League proven, but there aren't any players who are Premier League proven because if they were Premier League proven, they would be still in the Premier League. And that's the problem, isn't it? It's like you, you chase someone like that, like an El Bill El Torre, because he's a young player, they've obviously scouted him, obviously done a lot of work on him where he fits in, play on the right player front, blah, blah, blah. Ceiling is higher. If everything goes to plan, they can get a good, they can sell him on. Someone like Inacio, it's, you know what you're getting. And like you say, you bring him in for like maybe a two plus one year or a three plus one uh, year contract. And then, but you're, you're not getting rid of him. He's 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 one of those players where you, 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 sort, you know what you're getting and you'll still be disappointed. That's the problem, isn't it? It's like you'll it's like the Mopai signing, you know what you're getting, but you're still disappointed when he doesn't do what you knew he wasn't gonna do anyway. And then nobody wants him and you're stuck again with that with that collection of players that you're like you're looking for something and it's like he's a stopgap, but you'd have to give him four three years, let's say three years, two plus one maybe. It's and a ten million transfer fee yeah. or there or thereabouts. Yeah. And look, if it's Sign Ian Nacho or sign nobody. Mm. You sign Ian Nacho, don't yeah. you? But the argument of, oh, well, he's better than Malpe, so we mm. should bring him in. But last year we brought Malpe in because he was better than Rondon. Yeah. And now we all want him sold. And I'm, I'm not saying it's guaranteed that Ian Nacho will flop as badly as no. Malpe did. He, he might come in and do all right for us, get between five and ten goals. Yeah. And by all means, if you were to come in, me, you and everyone else would back him and want him to do well. Of course. We're just giving our opinions on a player that we've been loosely linked with at the moment. But yeah, it just goes back to why wasn't this sorted weeks ago? You know, if this is the last week of the transfer window, then you can make a comfortable decision on, look, we know we're not getting anyone else. Right now we have got the window to bring yeah. someone else in, but it's there's games come on and we need to think about them as well. I mean, listen, at least it, that's one thing, no, at least it... At least it is only there's two weeks to go, and we're getting maybe the knockback from somebody. We do have two weeks to get at the player in, uh, a player in to play up front, and we have got Dan Juma. Um, so there is that. It's not. It's not. We're not in the season yet. But Everton have got. I've got to get a move on. You know, again, non so There's some reports saying Leeds have. Close the door on on a on a transfer now. I mean, how accurate they are, I don't know. It, and he chose an interesting one because he his goals to games is poor, but his goals to minutes is decent. And you wonder why he hasn't played more at Le- at Leicester. Like he obviously played, he done well at he done he done well at City. As in, he was like that player who's always coming off the bench. But he had that quality. He had quality ahead of him where you're like well he's never going to get in the side here he just needs to go somewhere and i think we were we were we were sort of looking at him when he went to leicester but i think at the time leicester again were like a hotter proposition and i think there was always that thing oh he'll take over from vardy but vardy's just kept on going um it was a very hot prospect when he left man city though wasn't he because he was yeah. like the sort of uh, not the Marcus Rashford as such, he wasn't you know like a local lad or anything who's going to come in and it's captain the side, but he was the young striker who's you know gets in the team, he'll play the cup game or whatever, he'll come off the bench and maybe get a goal. And you know, he's exciting, he had pace, he was he was never going to be Man City's number nine, but he was one the fans liked and rated and thought everyone thought, oh, he can go to mid table Premier League and do quite well for himself. It's not really worked, mm. you said. Um, good goals to minutes ratio, bad goals to game ratio. Mm. I think that just sort of suggests that he gets brought off the bench a lot yeah. in the hopeless situations. Yeah. If he comes on for five minutes at the end mm. of the game, he's not going to score, but then that's chalked down as yeah, a, yeah. a game for him then, isn't it? But then every, every 10 of those he does, he might score, so then that's a goal every 50 well, minutes. You'd have to ask yourself the question, don't you? I mean, I've seen 
people in the comments like you know what why he didn't get in the team but the point being is his job was to get in the team and he didn't get in the team against you know uh, and 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 listen by the way i'm definitely not against the idea of signing for him absolutely not against us against them because i think that we've tried to go down i think dan juma was our first basically our first choice what we wanted he's the one we wanted yeah. to get done that really. was the one we wanted to get done and we've got that done now he this guy was more like it wasn't a punt because they'd done a lot of work on him i think he's chose atalanta and the reason he's chose atalanta it's very obvious why he's chose they have a fantastic track record of producing taking young talents and making them better they're playing in your forget about this Serie A versus Premier League it's playing at the top of Serie A against playing at the, the bottom end of the Premier League yeah it's the, not quite as level yeah, as it might it, normally it's, be also it's like a really good place to become a better player Everton is not a good place to become a better player because of the pressures that are on you as a footballer you know you can't exactly like you can't exactly you know look at Look, look at like Onana, right? Onana in the sort of similar boat. People question him because a large parts of the season they weren't seeing this finished product, and and they the pressures. Pe- people expect to see the finished product in the Premier League. They don't, they don't see players who are who are in and the time and the experience. I think someone would rather go to Atalanta. They're playing in Europe as well, and they are. They're in the top end of the Italian league and. He'll he'll have two years there, and then someone else will come knocking for him. Very much like, you know, um, the kid, you know, Hoy, Hoy, Hoyland. Hoyland is is about to go to Manchester United after being there one season. You can understand why. I I don't have any issue with a player saying, but I'd rather play for no, them than play for not. Everton. Um, I think the thing football fans can do sometimes as well as um think the player has the affinity towards the yeah. club that the fan does. Yeah. You know, this lad probably hadn't heard very much of Everton before we were trying to convince him yeah. to join and all that. So you can't blame him at all. You think, you know, okay, take Everton out of it. Mm-hmm. Imagine you're a lad from, is it Mali? He's from? Yeah, yeah. You're from there. You've got a Premier League team who've nearly been relegated the last two seasons coming in for you. Or you've got a team who are in Europe, constantly in Europe, mm-hmm. and bring through all these young players, and it clearly works for them. They know how to nurture them yeah. and move them on well. You're going to the second one, aren't you? Nine times out of ten. You're going to a place that is looking after your interest and looking after their interest. You know, let's get it. Whether people like it or not, if people looked at the Premier League, it's like, this is the comparison if it was within the Premier League. If he had the option to go to Brighton or Everton, he'd go to Brighton. That's just proof. You know, Brighton had a kid last night who scored a couple of goals that he bought, I think, from Norway, um, sent on loan for a year, and then have brought him back, and he scored a couple of cracking goals last night. Now, whether he'll be ready, whether he's ready to step up this season, or whether he'll be someone who'll simmer under for the year, that's what they do, and we don't do that. And yeah. that that's an issue. We haven't... We haven't we, we're looking for these players, but we can't quite get them over the line. And obviously, Onana was sort of like the first one, but he hasn't quite, he hasn't quite got to that level yet. Maybe it's probably going to take him another year, and then maybe if he does get to that level, people will start going, "Oh, Everton actually isn't, isn't a bad place to become." The proof is always going to be in the pudding, isn't it? So, I I understand why why the lads chose Atalanta. But the thing with Onana is, is with the situation we were in, and he was our biggest outlay at that summer, our biggest transfer fee spent on a player. For that reason, for how much we were struggling and how much we'd committed to him, he sort of did need to be the finished product. Yeah. But the whole thing around the Onana signing was that he's not the finished product yeah. yet, and it's going to take time for him to get there. Mm. So it was a double-edged sword, that in a lot of ways, because there's this thing he needs to be, but like we knew he weren't that when we yeah. got him, and... You know, we probably struggled a little bit more than we thought we would, which is why there was more expectancy on him to perform. And, you know, if you're Bill Altore, obviously an amazing prospect. You know, got the makeup to be a very good player in the Mm -hmm. future. But he got seven goals in 21 games last year. Not the finished product by any means, is he? It's massive potential there. But playing in a slightly weaker league as well, you think, okay, at best you're going to maintain that sort of one and three record and you get 11 goals. Mm. That's a good return, but it's, you know, it, you can still have a striker who gets that amount of goals and still go down as a club. So he went 
guaranteed to save us so there was sort of going to be this pressure on him if he comes in even if he does all right mm. there was always going to be that come on you're our, you're our big sign of the summer you're our 30 million pound player we need you to save us we need you scoring every week so th- there is always that sort of thing to consider that potential pressure that will be on these young players when you bring them into yeah. a relegation fight and they are the sort of signings we should make like you say because you can spin them for three times what you paid yeah. in the first place you can grow with the team. You can either sell them on for a profit or you can have that position sorted for the next eight years. But just while we're in a situation where we can't always afford these young lads the amount of time they need because it is a pressure cooker situation, yeah. they are going to look elsewhere. Yeah, and they're going to look at a team that has already got that stability as well where they're just adding to the quality of the side rather than you know people coming put, in to be the main man but yeah and putting pressure on them and i think that's you're right because i think when you like the one like if, if we got this player by the way if we'd got him over the line people would be looking so far i think and going we're having a fantastic transfer window so far we've brought in the experience of young who can play in three positions we've brought someone who's in in the middle with dan juma who's had premier league experience champion league experience uh, La Liga experience, and then we're bringing this young lad who, in two or three years, could become uh, worth you know uh, an absolute fortune. And while he's doing that, we're going to bring the next one in. I, I genuinely, I mean, I, I'd like to see what people's comments are on that. I do think it. Don't get me wrong. I understand. With two weeks to go, we don't want to be in that situation we were in last year, where we were like, "Well, we'll scrap the first five games, and then we'll get a striker in," because that's what it felt like. I think Everton have worked. I'm, I'm, I, yeah, there's a poll there, by the way, uh, for everyone. To, would you take uh, Ian Acho? Um To me, it's I don't want to be in that situation. But they'll have put a. It's sad that they probably have put a lot of work into this transfer, and I and I imagine he was probably like the main one that they really, really wanted. You know, I know Dan Juma probably would have been first choice, but I imagine he'd be the one that they really, really wanted, and and that'll be disappointing for them. Um, they'll have to learn the lessons of why they didn't get him and stuff, but. I do think if we ha- if we could have got him, people people will be saying, "Yeah, we're having a great transfer so f- transfer market so far. We're doing really well." So, um... I think if you look at the type of striker we've been linked with, it generally sort of seems to fit the same mould, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Which seems so, to imply, <laughs> and yeah. you know, it, it touch wood yeah. that we do have sort of um, a plan. Yeah. You know, in some way that we think, okay, we want a striker who can do this, this, and this. Yeah. We want to play this way. And, you know, it sounds daft to say that's something that should be celebrated, but it's really not always been that way, has it? Mm-hmm. It's sort of like they just pick out, uh, oh, a uh, striker, okay, pick out the 10 names, just put mm-hmm. the best ones in order. It doesn't matter how different in style they are. Just, yeah, get me some names. So the hope is that we've, uh, we've targeted a player of a clear uh, style of play, yeah, clear strengths to his game. We haven't been able to get that player, but there are other players out there who can do the same things. Mm. You know, Bill Altore, like I said, great prospect, but he's not being bought right now for his amazing goal-scoring ability that he has right now. It's being bought for his physical side of the game, the thing that you can't really teach. You can teach someone to score. You can't really go, I'm going to teach you to be fast yeah, yeah. if they're naturally slow. So go and get another player of that same mould, physical striker, decent it's... in the air, pace strong. Yeah, the worry is, is that obviously the backups, it would seem, are more, you know, your first choice is someone that you've worked really hard on, done all the hard work, and then the backup is just so obvious. It's just centre forward who played for Leicester and got relegated, who they'd happily see leave. That's that's the, I suppose that's exactly where we are, isn't it, in, in terms of, um, as a club at the moment. And, and, some like, and players like that, you are looking to replace them after two, three years. And again, that's an issue. It's like, you're always you're always a year away from going. Oh, he's only got two years left on his contract. We're going to have to sort this out, aren't we? And we've got loads of them at the moment in our squad. I mean, you know, at the moment we've got the Marty Graves on one year. I know you, you can, we can add another year to that. Then we've got a Wobies on one year. There's, you know, it's Corey. the Corey's only got one year left. And got this, but the Ghana sign a two-year deal, so the just a Ghana guy. So this will be his. Um, but we've got to, we have what we have got to do is we've just got to bring players in. We've just got to we've got to now just try and bulk that squad up a little bit. Not with like not with needless signings, of course, but we've been going for the last couple of weeks. We've been going round in circles, haven't we? Like you know, this kid Nonto, 
uh, Ian Atchow come into it this week. We just, I think, just need to get another one over the line just to just to bolster that squad so that it gives us that. I think if Dan Juma plays on Saturday, by the way, against Stoke, I think that gives. I know he's an Everton player, but I think if he goes into the team and he says, and we say that like, we're playing up front instead of Mopai, instantly I think people go, oh, I can see the structure of this team coming together. Um, you know whether it, or he plays on the left and and if he plays on the left and you suddenly on Dom's on the bench people might go oh, actually you know this isn't but McNeil on the on the on the right hand side and people might start to see oh this isn't that bad but it's because at the moment we've only seen Ashley Young that people are like God we've got so much to do and and you know we're not scoring goals again which is a big issue again we know that the team weren't going to instantly start scoring goals, or we wasn't going to instantly start going to be a goal scorer. Um, not certainly Mopai wasn't. So it 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 it's difficult at the moment. It really is. We just I just think I don't want to get desperate and go just go and get just go and get him. But if if he's number if he was number two on the list on this like other list, then let's go and get him. Then if he is, if that's the plan, to my plans, if that's the plan, but then. Go and get him then. Just get, go and get him, bring him in, and let's let's move on for the next one then. Yeah, well, Brian probably is one that interests me. Yeah. You know, he's got that same sort of physical side as Bill Altore. He's come through Ajax. He had a spell at um, Leipzig as well, didn't he? Mm. Didn't really work out, went back to Ajax. But he's been highly rated in European football for a couple of years as this sort of young emerging prospect. I imagine Ajax was sort of hoping that he'd exploded by now. Yeah. But then they've had a tough year over the last season. They've signed a lot of older players as well. They feel like they've sort of lost that touch a tiny bit in terms of it, how efficient they were with managing their players and bringing the players through three or four years ago. And they'll get it back because they're Ajax, but at the moment in a little bit of a blip. But he's definitely one to look at. If he's not on the club's radar, if they're even not interested in him or it's just a deal that won't happen, then... Aya Nacho is really the only other name on there, isn't he? I know people mention it, Bull Idea. Yeah, um, and that's because Italy. you could possibly do a deal with Mopai going the other way. Well, he had a good goal return last year, and he scored far more goals than any of the other strikers we've mm. been linked with. Maybe doesn't mark up quite the same as an aerial presence as a, a Bill Altore or a Brobby does, yeah. but he may be an option. If these other players from Europe aren't on the club's radar and it's Aye Nacho or no one, then you get Aye Nacho, don't you? And then you hopefully get Gnonto in. And then you've got Aye Nacho, Gnonto, Dan Juma and McNeil who can all hopefully get upwards of five goals. And that's still not a prolific team by any means, but it's an improvement on last year. Well, physically, you can understand what they're trying to do physically. You know, all those players, um, big, strong, got a bit of pace about them. So physically, you can see what they, they don't, even though Mopai has like played in all three games, they just don't want that kind of centre forward. You know, it was interesting the other night at Bolton with having having Dobbin quite close to him and him dropping in and creating a space for Dobbin to run in in in, in behind. Never quite come off because Dobbin's just not got the physicality. But um, Dan Juma could be that. Well, Dan Juma could he? be that player. And he, that could have been simply, but but it's clear what they want up front, and it's it's not it's just not Mopai because he. Does his best work, if you want to call it that, by dropping in, and that's not what the t- that's not what he wants for his team because it slows down the game, slows down the play. You know, you want you want players moving. From what I've seen, literally so so far this preseason, well as it's not a great uh, thing to go off. But he wants to he wants the ball moving all the time. You know, left to right and 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 you know the opposite. So I just don't think you know Mopai just. Whether he scored goals or didn't score score goals, he just slows the game down for me too much. To and for an Everton team, it almost has to. It needs that momentum to carry it forward because when it stops, it doesn't have enough movement in it to go to break teams down. It has to be on the go all the time. No, because there's not that quality to break teams down with the ball and to let them sit off us and dominate the ball for ten minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, it does have to be like you say, quick transitions, hit them hard, hit them fast. Yeah. Neil Mopai isn't that player, and even if he was scoring slightly more often than he did last season, say you got three or four, I think we'd still be looking at him as a poor sign, and just because he'd, he'd hurt the team by being in it, it sounds harsh to say it's not all his faults, because he doesn't suit the no. way we want to play, but it's like what Sigurdsson was for us, you know, he, he would chip in with goals quite a lot, but 
quite often with him in the team, we'd play poorly just because he'd slow things down so much when we were trying to move fast. And then when you've got that with your striker as well, it becomes an even bigger problem. Neil Mope, he's not an awful footballer. He could get goals in the yeah. Premier League. He has done before. It just doesn't suit us just at all. Suit us. It, it's, just he, a, it's just a really bad signing. It's just a really bad signing. That's what it. That you know, that's what it was. It was just a really poor signing. It just didn't suit having a backup to Dominic Alvin Loon, who has absolutely zero in common with him as a footballer. But at least the players we're looking at now do have something in relation to him, so that you know you can swap you know you have one in you don't have to change this we, we said this loads last season it's like you know if you got to a friday friday afternoon and someone tells you dom's not available and you've been training all week to play certain way and suddenly you've got to play mobile there what are you going to do at least with someone like Ian Acho, you've, you've got to play with similar similar a similar statue you know over six foot um you've got a bit of pace about them can drag a drag center center backs around a little bit at least you've got that at least you've got that to back up back her up and that's not a bad back up and actually the way obviously the way Dominic Carpenter's um injury record is he'd probably play more more than he didn't. But it's like, you know, when you do uh, like your shopping from like the Asda on like the home delivery and oh, they yeah. have the substitutions oh, in yeah. and that. Yeah. And say like you order like a loaf of bread yeah. and then the fellow comes and goes, ah sorry, we had no bread so I've got this substitution. It's a it's some shower gel. Yeah. Yeah. And you like the shower gel is useful yeah, yeah. and nice, but I can't have it for a butty. No. I wanted this bread to to make butties yeah, yeah. and you know the, the shower gel is good to have it's if handy. you want it. It's but handy. I, I, I can't eat it. Yeah. Can't argue with that. I just can't argue with that logic. Just can't argue. It's the type with of quality it. analysis you get on it top is. of TV this, comparing this players to loaves of bread this and is, this is like it. the shower gel. That's 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 the issue right there. Um, let's have a look at some of the comments on uh, if you if anyone wants to chip in with some other names that we should sign yeah throw some names at throw us throw some names at us um, Aldi Gary Matthew Barry says afternoon lads hope you're well congratulations on the 50 million views cheers mate amazing achievements I think Inacho would be a great signer for us he may not be prolific but he's clever and draws defenders to allow mid for midfield runners do we have midfield runners Um. If he can get 10 to 12 goals, he would make a massive difference for us. Absolutely. I think what we need to add to our team this year is, like, if we could add 20 goals to our team, then that would be unbelievable. But that's a whole new world to what that we is, were last that season. That is. That's, like, from, like, Aladdin kind of stuff, that is. Well, we probably uh, barely touched 20 goals all year last year anyway, so... What did we finish with, like, 44 or something like that? I thought it would have been in the high 30s, but I, I couldn't verify maybe that. Was, so. Yeah, yeah. Maybe right. I'm, I'm thinking like an idiot there. Um, but if you were to go say, yeah, if you were, if you if Everton could get yeah at least 15 more goals, that would be huge. We were talking about it yesterday on on I think we we're doing on the live uh, club call, and we were saying you know we're comparing us to Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace had three more wins. Um, Three, three, three less losses. So simply just three more wins than us, and so nine points. And the goal difference was like, what was it? it was like they conceded nine less goals or something, and they scored something like eight more goals. It was like it was literally that's all it was. It was just simply three more wins, the the extra goals and concede. You know, it was it was that's all it was. It was nothing, and yet they finished eleventh, and finished strong. And I know till Roy Hodgson come in, they were all. Everyone thought, well, maybe they could go. But that just shows you the difference we're having in the end, being like, oh, no, we're sound. And you could like... easily go through last season and pick out three games that Everton could have and should have won. Pick out a few that we should have we at least drawn. we got beat by two of the relegated teams for a start. Leicester Southampton, Southampton game should have been one. Wolves beat us at home. That minimum should have been a draw. So there's three that you go, you could just flip them. I know people go, well, we beat Arsenal. But we, we always tend to be one of the big teams a season at home at least and our away record was just abysmal so if we could if we could say in our and our home record just becomes so bad that you just think there's no reason why we couldn't win three or four extra home games and actually and the away the way what did we win two away games so our away our away performances just have to improve like they're on the floor as they are so any improvements from two wins and the home win you know is is 
And that comes from goals, quite simply. Yeah, and you know, you're saying add 20 goals. I think 10 probably does that yeah, for us. Yeah, I'm being, I'm being high we, in the sky, mate. If we don't start conceding loads more, 10 goals could easily mean 10 more points. Yeah. Easily. It can do. If they come in the right places, obviously. We, we win every game 1-0. Yeah. Well, you know, there's some of them goals could come in like a 5-1 defeat and that, but, you know, overall it could easily add 8 to 10 more points and that just changes the entire makeup of your season and, you know, I do think that in terms of what we're looking for in a striker, it sounds very silly to say, but I think a stylistic fit is more important than a sort of proven goal scorer. Obviously, we need both, but... You know, this team's strength is going to be in being able to be fitter than teams, be more solid than them, hopefully take advantage of set pieces. We're not going to be destroying teams left, right and centre. We're going to have to be more solid than them, want it more than them, outwork them, all the cliches. Mm. But to do that, you need a striker who fits the way you want to play, you can break fast, doesn't slow things down. So even if he's not the one scoring or even assisting, he's not slowing the move down to prevent another player from doing it. And that's why, you know, there's names like Bull Idea who have good goal returns. I can't say I've watched them, so I don't know whether or not he'd be a great fit for the Everton side. I've only looked at his stats briefly, and from what I could tell, he wasn't mm. great in the air. I hear Nacho, at least I, I can tell you a bit more about him. He's mm. got a little bit of pace. He could help us be fast on the break, like you say, draw a man away, and then maybe Dan Juma makes that mm. run. We don't need a striker to come in and get 15 goals to turn our season around. We need one who can help us play the way we want to play. Sean Dice isn't stupid. He'll have a plan for every game. We just need to be able to implement that and what yeah. that takes as a striker who fits us. I think the caveat is to all this, and I think people have got to remember that all this is that Everton don't have a large amount of money to go and splash around. They have to structure deals in a way that's good for us and the, the opposition have got to be you know so that gives you especially if you if you've got someone else competing with you that makes it very very difficult if other clubs are saying we're going to give you x amount of front and everton are saying we'll give you a five yeah. every day for a million days would you take uh cinema vouchers that you get with three got you know, this blockbuster card yeah, yeah. like yeah. we've just we've got two for one deals with me a cat um so it's they've also got that to the, the negotiation wiggle room is is just they've got to be very very creative very very creative and that makes it that makes it such a difficult people clubs are going to go no straight away we need money up front so we can go and buy our replacements or whatever so everything from the offer are in a very difficult situation um that's that's the problem right there but it is often going to be players that other teams don't necessarily want. Because like you say, if other teams are interested, then they can go, yeah, I don't know, they're offering you the money over a 10-year period or whatever. Do you just want it all now? We can do that for you. And that's why when you go for these highly rated young players like Bill Altora, you've got European football teams wanting them, trying to buy them. You are going to miss out because they can offer more up front. Mm. So we all want those players. I desperately want those type of players at Everton, but if they're good enough for us, chances are there'll be other teams that are in for them, see the same things we do, and they're going to be able to offer a little bit more than us. Yeah, sadly. Sadly, that's where we are right now, and, and beggars really can't be choosers uh, as it stands. Um, Stanley Mills has just joined Oxford United on a season-long loan, so that's good news for him. Uh, what league are Oxford now? Are they League One? L- um, don't know. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, league One. A good move for him, isn't it? Good level to test them at. Obviously, if you start them at League Two mm. and you want to move them up on the same sort of trajectory, you have a Lewis Warrington. It's maybe he's a little bit yeah, old he, to make that transition he at that gone point. In January. He should have gone in January, but again, because the club was a mess, all probably all got overlooked you know, wasted the last four or five months of the season playing for Everton on the 21s where, you know, he scored 10 goals. Uh, watched them the other night. He didn't really stand out. I'll have to say that. Again, physic- it's physicality. The good thing is, Dom, no Everton players stood out this pre-season. <laughs> so they're all sort <laughs> of on the same of level. The no one's underperforming. Uh, none of the first teams stood out. Um... 
Matt Gibson said we'll only take Iniato if we buy another from Europe, as I don't think a bench warmer from a relegated Premier League team is a 90 minute week and week centre forward. No, I, I listen, what I would say to that is, I think he, it depends on what they want for him, but it does create, it gives us another option. It's a similar stature to Dominic Carvel Noon. When the season starts, we've still got another th- three weeks, haven't we? To or two weeks, sorry, to get try and get more players in. Um, we just need players for that first game. We can't be like last season. We need options for that first game uh, at home. Obviously, the first couple of home games are winnable. They really are. They are really bill it away. It'll be difficult, but they'll they'll be you know they'll be the winnable. So we need players in. We can't have that situation like we did last season. I know there was a longer time last season with more games because of obviously the World Cup. But um, yeah. but Fulham at home at any point in the season is a winnable game for us, isn't it? It's not one we can really afford to throw away. Can't afford to throw any game no. away, but. Ones like that where, you know, you look at it on paper before the fixtures are released and go, yeah, I think we could win that. Yeah. Those aren't ones you want to throw away. No. Uh, which your pass this afternoon. Bloody ground dog day again. Seems like Torre, Inacho and Nonto are the only strikers in world football. It does, doesn't it? But what that says is they're the ones that Everton think they can get. They're the ones they've identified and think they can get. There's a lot of strikers in the world, but clearly they've already just picked up the phone and had a no straight away for most of them. Otherwise, there would be... Of course, there are other ones out there. I don't... A lot of the time, Everton don't... don't You don't think they know that, but they would have picked up the phones and said, is there any chance? It's like, no. Well, then we don't start that long process of negotiations then. It's it's the Omer Simpson thing where he walks in the bar and gets told to leave straight away, innit? Because they, they just didn't know. We know your skins. <laughs> um... Professor Poopy Pants says, seems like things have a have got a little tough with Nonto and Notori. I have big reservations about Inacho. He was the second striker a relegated club and we and will have no sell on value, but at twenty six he should be in his prime. It's a smart words and that's why he's a professor. It is. I don't know what he's a professor of though. That's the worrying thing. Poopy pants. Well that's just his second name. Yeah, true. He's probably a scientist like Ned. Are you sure? Can you prove that? Yeah. Can you prove it? Name, we'll prove it then. I like your glasses, Ned. Ned looks, looks like, like a ginger Stephen no. Hawking. <laughs> he does look like a young Stephen Hawkins, doesn't he? Um, the poll at the moment is 71% of you would sign uh, Ian Atio. Fair play. Do you understand why, don't you? Because he, he is an upgrade on what oh, we have currently. I wonder how much we Actually, have to pay for them though, like ten million. Yeah, I think around on about ten million. Ten million, and it would, I suppose it'd be how we'd have to pay for it though, as in like, could we use shower gel? <laughs> could we use shower gel to sign them? No, but I mean, like, what we'd have to pay up front, I suppose, and 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 um. Yeah, well, I don't think you'd be looking at longer than a three-year contract. So if you're looking at sort of free instalments at three million, maybe. Mm. Yeah, I suppose. Leicester, if Leicester can't afford them, they'll just they'll be willing to take what they're going, what you know, what's on offer for them. I imagine. Yeah, well, you do uh, wonder about relegation clauses with a lot of the Leicester squads mm. because you know they are a team that were once flying very high, mm. challenging for your relegation clauses probably wouldn't have been on their minds. You know? Is he? Yeah, he's out of contact next year, so that's another reason why they wouldn't why they wouldn't wouldn't want to keep him. Because if he stays, he's out, he's walking out the door for nothing. Yeah. So for a year left on his contract. And he had over 10 million and overspend, just I think. Just on loan. That's what, because that's what we do. We just let him go on loan. Yeah, he's got a year left on his contract. Got turns 27 in October. Um, yeah, I, maybe we, maybe we could do, maybe we could get a clever deal there and, 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 um, yeah, and as said, I'm I'm not I'm not against that. I think he I think he I think yes, I think we all know he'd be one of those players who would still be quite frustrating. But he's got Premier League experience and Vegas cannot be choosers. They just cannot be. Put it this way, if you can get Ayer Nacho 
and then you also bring Gnonto in. And then, you know, you've still got your, your young player who can improve and their values protected and are likely impre- increase, sorry, which is, you know, part of uh, the upside of Bill Altora. You've still got that. And then you've got your striker option as well. And then you've got options to build an attack with McNeil, I hear Nacho, Gnonto, Dan Juma. You've got your options. And I think that wouldn't be the worst situation in the world. I do think we do need to try and sign a player of that sort of, yeah. you know, younger project type of signing because that's future money, then that's yeah. future sell-on value. I'm all in. I'm all, I'm all in for him. Let's go, let's go and sign him. Soddy. Let's just go and get him. Get him in. Soddy. Give, strip, strip Dom of the number nine. Give it to him. Make him the captain. Make, why not? No, give the captain to Ashley Young. No. <laughs> Oh, just keep it on Coleman. Tark, he's the captain now. That's it. Um, Everton Vikings, as initially I was on board for Ian Acho, but the more I looked into it, the more red flags I got. Sure, his goals to minutes ratio is good, but he couldn't displace a Vardy whose legs had gone, and even Dacher started ahead of him sometimes. I don't really see what else he has got. He has, he has to his game than being able to come off the bench and score sometimes. I mean, that's, that's one up on most of our plays, though, isn't it? Yeah. I still don't know why he didn't start more and there has to be a reason behind it. I'm also not sure he offers what we would need if we needed along with Saika. I don't see his hold-up play being all that good and I don't think he's very quick either. His goals per game ratio is not very good at all. People tell me he's a good player. I ask them why and their only argument is that his goals to minutes ratio but he ignores the red flags. I would massively... Ma- I, I could be massively, massively wrong and I'm certainly no expert on him but... but Although ten million looks good, his wages are huge, and I don't think it would improve us a ton based on the limited knowledge I have of him. Much prefer uh, we have a risk on a young prospect. We need players who can improve and improve his sell on profit. For him being nearly twenty twenty seven, I don't see it happening, especially with how his career has gone. No, I I listen. I basically agree with everything you said there. I just look at where we are as a club and just think. I think. We had all our irons in one fire, or maybe two with Nonto. And this fella now is a backup. Yes, I, you're absolutely right. The whole goals per game, put goals per minute, it does set alarm bells to what, why he doesn't play more. But what, what I would say is, though, Sean Dyche, when he was at Burnley, it was like the home of broken toys, wasn't it? It was like, it's where he took players that no one really fancied, and he got a little tune out of them. And kept them, you know, in the Premier League punching and punching above their weight most of the time. That's what they might be looking at. And and he is a listen, he he is the back he has been described as the backup striker. And he's been literally the backup striker for our transfer. <laughs> uh, you know, so yeah. There are there are quite a few negatives. I I do appreciate that. Yeah, it's no one's ideal signing, is no. it? Even everyone's saying now, yeah, take him. I don't think he's the player at the start of the transfer window. Anyone went, let's get him in. But it needs must. Mm. I'd understand it. It just wouldn't want it, it but because of what it shows the, us about the club. The, I think the problem is it's the, it's the time you have to put into these transfers. The young, exciting players coming out of Europe, you have, we'd have to put a lot of time into those transfers because we have got no money. You know, I've heard various rumours of what we offered to, 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 Alme, to Almedia. And, and I'll be honest, they don't sound good. Like, don't get me wrong, the money was there. It was just how we were offering. And, you know, it, we, we don't have, we just don't have that cash up front to tempt these clubs to get them into the get them talking, you know, pick up the phone and you're interested, what, what are you offering? No, mate. Be able to get the deals done quickly as well, yeah, exactly. so there is time for other clubs cash, to come in and go. Cash gets you, cash gets your players quick, gets you right, it gets you, it gets the other club interested very, very quickly, what are you offering, how much you offering up front? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, we'll get that done straight away. It, it takes time, it takes time even if you're offering cash, but if you've got cash, it smooths it out really quickly yeah but it's not FIFA is it where you just put the number and go there you go you take that yes yeah, sound nice one see you later it, it, these things take time don't you and you know sell on clauses like you said that all has to be worked out and negotiated yeah. yeah that's that's it and I agree with what a lot of people are saying in the comments about um 
about uh, you know going after players and there's better. I, I there are of course there's better players out there, but as I said, it's the time you have to put into those deals and what those and what those people want. Um, Crimson says we should inquire about taking Lukaku on loan. Could you imagine what Chelsea would want, what the wages and what he'd want? Um, you'd have you'd have no chance. Um, There's I'm, also the thing to consider that in 2023 is Romelu Lukaku that good of a footballer anymore? Yeah, he's better than all players. But yeah, he is. But you know, even if we had the money, yeah. would he be worth paying his weekly wages for the 12 goals he might get? That's it. That's it. Uh, uh, John Jones says we have Dobbin and Cannon, but want to pay twenty million for a twenty million twenty million for a nineteen year old. Well, yeah, but that doesn't that tell you how good Dobbin and Cannon are. You know, we talked about this the other day about Onana. We've got young players like Tyler and Younger who are basically the same age as Onana. Does that that tells you everything you need to know? There's players playing in Europe we've been playing for the last couple of years who are ready to go. We've got players who are 19, 20, who are nowhere near the level. Just While Torres, our overall game develops, he's going to be a great finisher with all this extra. Tom Cannon might just become a great finisher. Yeah, that's it. But I don't think age really comes in. You can't, I don't think you can really... I think our, the way our systems work in this country for young players is just awful. And they've revamped the under twenty ones again, by the way. So there's no leagues anymore. There's just this one big, po- one big group of teams, and they're going to be selected and put into like pots and like these mini leagues. It, but it's it it's nonsense because it doesn't work. It the players just who are good enough take the step over the under twenty ones. Players have to go out on loan. The under twenty one system is just a glorified place to hold footballers. You know. And out of the out of the eleven that might start every week, it might just to be to facilitate one who's really good, you know. And and it just it just doesn't it just doesn't work. I mean, as we I mean, as I've said loads of times when we were kids, we went out and watched the resis, and you had a mix of old players, young players, and it was proper games of footy. You go watch the twenty ones. It's just lads not being touched. I watch like watch some of them play, when they play against Bolton. Bolton players were just like cutting off the passes because, and they don't, they're not no, not used to that. It's just no, a and bad system. Like you say, you might get like the one or two in that team who are going to come into the team, so you do need somewhere for them to play every week. But it, it it's a broken system, isn't it? And the, the league don't know what to do with it because they change it every year. And then it was under twenty threes, and mm. we have a club who's put far too much faith into this under twenty threes thing. Keep yeah. them at the club. We'll, we'll let them train with the first team. Yeah. And stuff we've been guilty of not having a plan with all that as well, haven't we? Of course we have. John, the, you saying I always dismiss our young players because they're not good enough, mate. I've watched them. They're, they're not to the level that we need them to be. What what I hate is, and this is why I do it, is because people put stupid expectations on players who have a few good games in the twenty ones, and I hate it because it sets this unrealistic bar for these players to get to. So Stanley Mills. Scored goals. He needed to go out in January. He was way too good for the under twenty ones. He had to go out, and I'm ha- delighted he has gone out now. You know, I've heard people for the last two summers telling me Lewis Wallington should be in the first team. He was nowhere near the first team. He's now gone to Plymouth, and hopefully he does well at Plymouth in the Championship. And he's in that. It's got. He's made that step up to the Championship. But they're not where like Old Trafford and Anfield. He didn't know how to hold the ball up, and that's. That's not his fault. I I don't. I think that's poor development. You know, um, we 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 have to allow players. I'm more angry at the setup. By the way, I'm more angry that our players don't get an opportunity to go out and play and play every game wherever they go. Um, and that has started to happen more. I will I will say that. Um, but I I don't like these expectations that people put on them. It's it. That's all it is. That's all it is. But the reason why, you, I'm just going to come back to, the reason why, listen, I don't know whether Nonto is good enough, but what I know is, right, Nonto is 19. He's already had a season in the Premier League and he's a full Italy 
Italy international. So just be so he's nineteen and we've got a nineteen year old player. Well, let's compare him to our nineteen year old player who's who might have never kicked the ball in the Premier League. Certainly he's not playing for the, the England first team or whatever national team he plays for. Certainly hasn't played a year in the Premiership, Premier League, have they? So it's not about the age, it's about the experience, it's about what they've done. So Nonto is the kind of player you look at. And I'm I'm not I'm not like sitting here going, we must sign Nonto. But he's got a year, years worth of, so they can actually look at him and go, let's 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 look at him against other players in the Premier League, not against under twenty ones. The under twenty ones is abysmal, mate. That's 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 the worst thing that's happened, I think, to football in this country is the under twenty ones. People will probably tell me, oh no, it's a great pathway. I for Everton, I think it's been abysmal. I really do, because it doesn't it sets players up to fail. I think. Because they don't play against players every single week that are going to... Like, the loan system works. But the under-20... Watching under-21's game, mate, honestly, oh, they're awful. See, I don't know about setting them up to fail as such, but what I would say is that an under-21's game is more similar to a friendly than yeah. it is a competitive well, Premier that's, that's League game. Saying. No, I, I get you. I, I do agree with you. It's uh, people underestimate the difference in between um, an under twenty ones game and Premier League football. Yeah. It's it's different. Yeah. There's there's a different level of competitiveness, physicality, desire in there. They are friendly matches, really. They are, yeah. Because you know players aren't trying to think, oh, we need to win this under twenty ones game, so I need to look good so I can play real football. It's different. At Lewis Dobbin, I was just looking at his stats, and he was another one who was playing well in the twenty ones. People wanted him in the first team. He went to Derby last year. Got four goals and three assists in forty games. Yeah. Didn't have a bad loan spell by any no, means. No. You know, he had a good season. He can continue developing. Have another loan. But um, one of the things he had to do last season was, and this is what you've got to remember as well, he had to get used to actually physically playing forty games in a season. Yeah, and going from Saturday to Tuesday to to Saturday to Wednesday every single game. I think th- those players after those players have to have that like Anthony Gordon basically skipped the under 21s he played about five or six games for him and then got into the first team because he was clearly too good and he had a little bit of nouse as well he had a little bit of nouse and he's clever and then we ended up making good money on him like the, the best player we had in the under 21s Chelsea's just bought him because they see straight away that he's got that something and it's it's really difficult and I'm not I don't have a go at these players. I'm trying to just like not set unrealistic expectations for them. So no, I mean I you've you you made a good point, mate. You've made a good point. And all those players who played, by the way, for the under twenty ones who won for England, right? They don't play in the under twenty ones. They all play in the first team. Some of them, you know, they all play in and around the first team, all out on loan at like at really good clubs. You know, I'd be amazed if any of those young players, because you've got an England on the twenty-one squad. Are you really pick and players who play in the in in the Premier League too. You're playing by you're bringing in players who've played football, um, and it's easier for other clubs. Like you know, Ned, we were talking me and Ned to someone, uh, uh, Lavier, who's going to Liverpool. Looks like he'll probably play in every Europa League game for Liverpool this season, or like Man City players will play in every. A Carabao Cup game. That's the difference. We don't even blood our players in the Carabao Cup, really. So it's really, really difficult. It's it's a re- for us for a, for a club like us who has limited opportunities for people to play, and the pressure's so high. You know, if a, and that's why it's going to be really interesting for Brantwood this season. Really interesting. Well, at least he's one who's gone out and had proper experience, well, he has, and he won a cup, and he finished second in the league, and he played. He's played in the championship as well. And don't forget, we took him from Carlisle as well, where he was already playing first team football. So he already knew that expectation. Him. So, listen, we could talk about it all day. Really good, John. I'm glad you brought that up, mate. Fair point to you, mate. Glad you brought it up. It's a really interesting discussion. You know, I'm not sitting here saying I'm 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 right about it because I'm I'm you know. I'm just saying I don't like the pressure that gets put on our young players because I just think it's unrealistic. So it's a really good point. No, thanks. it's a good discussion yeah. to be had, though, isn't yeah, it? About yeah. so the structure of it. For your, thanks for your question. Right, we're gonna we're gonna go over. Uh, we're going over to our more than a game channel. We're gonna do the transfer show. There's a few interesting developments today. Uh, if you, I don't know what what why is Ned doing like a Bond villain thing? Excited. Are you just excited? Uh, so stay tuned. There'll be a link at the end of this video, which will take you straight over to there. Um, and you can watch that for half an hour. 
and subscribe and, and have great fun because it will be lots and lots of fun. Jack knows everything about everything. And I think he's a I'm lot a more... genius. I think you're a lot more experienced on the jury front now as well than anyone else in this room. Yeah, I think I know more about Jordan's GC and everything for the hands it than anyone I know, especially anyone with ginger hair and glasses. I believe so. I, I mean, that's only because I haven't got my glasses on. That's because um, also I did sit on my glasses the other day and break the arm, which was a bad move. It's not ideal. No, but my glasses were only cheap. If Ned done that, it would cost him a fortune. Uh, on the vote, seventy-two percent of the people said they will. Uh, they would like to see Iniacho sign for Evan. There you go. Thanks. Stay tuned. Go over to more than the game transfer show. See you in a minute.